What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me one more time for one more installment of Augie's Quick Beer Reviews. Today, I bring you something special and something new. As I saw this on the shelf for the first time uh, a few days ago, and I had to pick it up. Well, today's beer is from Yingling. Of course, the Yingling, the famous Yingling Brewery in Pennsylvania. This is Yingling's Bach beer. Now, I saw this and I said, wow, I've never seen that beer from Yingling. Obviously, Yingling makes their famous lager. They make a light beer. They make the black and tan. They make a porter. They make a Lord Chesterfield ale, if I'm not mistaken. But I have never seen the Bach. Uh, I had to go home and look it up and see exactly what the deal was with the Bach. And as it turns out, and I mean, just to you know, run you through my process, I get home and first I go to Beer Advocate. Turns out Yingling's Bach only has 81 reviews, averages out to a B. Um, Yingling Brewery, Pottsville, Pennsylvania, obviously. Uh, beer is categorized as a Bach, and it's 5.10 ABV. Okay, uh, and it says uh, spring seasonal. Alright, so it's the spring seasonal. No wonder I hadn't seen it before. But then, I keep poking around. And let me punch up that other window. And I end up on a press release from Yingling.com. An actual press release from Yingling saying, Yingling Bach beer to return in 2010. Uh, just to summarize, they, uh, they released this beer, they introduced this beer for their 180th anniversary celebration last year as a draft only beer, late last year, late 09, uh, winter. And it was the first time that they introduced a Bach in 40 years. And it was apparently so successful that they decided to release it in bottles. Um, it's going to be a limited run, um, will last for approximately 10 to 12 weeks. But yeah, this is basically a brand new beer from Yingling. Uh, both the label and the package design is based on actual Yingling Bach beer artwork from 1941. So that's cool stuff. So, you know, I saw this and, you know, at first I was worried maybe it's from last year, it's old beer, it's, you know, something odd, I've never seen it before. And go figure, this is a brand new offering from Yingling. Now, Yingling is a staple up and down the eastern seaboard. Uh, they're not very available on the Midwest or the West Coast, but up and down the East Coast, these guys are in direct competition with Bud, Miller, and Coors. Most bars will have Yingling on tap right next to Bud or, you know, whatever else. Um, now, they are considered a macro, and I consider them a macro as opposed to a craft brewery because they're not really craft beers. I like their lager, and I would drink Yingling's lager before I drink a Bud any day of the week, but it's not a craft beer. They use adjuncts. They do use corn in the brewing process. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a cheap twist-off American draft lager, but better than what the big three offer you. So when I saw this, I had to try it because I want to try something different from Yingling. So, take a look at the bottle here. You know, the goat drinking out of the goblet. I love that. Cool old school artwork. And of course, Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Um, they have been family owned for a, a, since, since 1829, it says on the bottle. I think they're on the fifth or sixth generation of uh, family ownership. So, yeah. So I, I, I got respect for them. I mean, you know, they're a good American brewery. And again, I'd rather have a Yingling than a Bud any day. So that's why I had to pick up their Bach and see what Yingling has to offer with their Bach. Now, it's uh, obviously, Beer Advocate says it's spring seasonal. The Yingling press release doesn't specify. This may become a winter or spring seasonal for them, or it may not come back next year. So I definitely have to try this now while it's available. And to try a Bach, I figured what better glass than my beloved Dead Guy glass. Because even though Dead Guy is an ale, hence the name Dead Guy Ale, um, it is brewed in the Bach style. So for a Bach, what better glass? Why not? And of course, um, these are twist offs, no need for an opener. So let's get right to it and see what the Yingling Bach has to offer. And by the way, this beer is really smoky. I just saw that as I was pouring it. A whole lot of smoke came out that bottle. And a whole lot of head is starting to form. All right. Looks good.
Mmm. Very soapy, foamy head. More than I expect for a lager, to be honest with you. And, um, color-wise, it's, it's, let's see, it's a dark red, brownish, kind of a dirty copper color. It's very clear. I'm not seeing any active carbonation, and, I mean, this beer is super filtered. I can see right through it. But the color, that, that reddish, brownish, really dark copper color is really nice to look at. And the head's fizzed away a little, but there's still a good half inch on there. Looks good. Not a lot of big bubbles. So, I mean, so far, so good, man. It looks good. Doesn't smell that great, though. And I don't mean to knock it, but the smell reminds me of Yingling's Black and Tan, which is their porter mixed with their traditional lager. It just kind of has a smell of uh, your, you know, typical lager yeast smell. A hint of malts. A bit of earthiness to it. And maybe a hint of, I, I don't know if that's adjunct, like a corn smell. Or there, there's something there that, that I don't think shouldn't be. I mean, that I think shouldn't be there, but oh well. I mean, you catch a bit of maltiness in the smell, kind of a slightly toasty maybe, kind of malt smell. And it is nice. The head's fizzed down a little, but uh, it still looks good, so let me just dig right in. Hmm. i got to admit, for a beer this darker color, it's thin. It's thinner than you'd expect for this color. You do get some maltiness, kind of a toasty, malted character to it. That'll hit you up front. But then you realize how thin it is, and it all just kind of washes down real easy. There's a there's a faint bitterness from the hops towards the end. It's very earthy, but yet faint. And kind of this gritty texture. You know, kind of like really dark coffee. You know, has that. Because I like my coffee really, really black. So, you know, when you do a really dark coffee, you get that grainy, that, that burnt grainy kind of character to it. And there's a little bit of that there. I can't tell you right away that I detect adjunct, that I detect corn. I know Yingling uses corn. But there is a little something in there that I just, I mean, this is not a great box, i got to admit. I'm a bit disappointed. But at the same time, there's something that kind of reminds me of their black and tan. You know, it's kind of like you, you take a dark beer, you take a lager, you mix it together, and you end up with this watery mishmash of flavors. And that's kind of what it is. I mean, it's bland all the way around as far as having no striking flavor. There's no strong hop. There's no strong malt. There's kind of a, a toasted, malty character to it, but there's no strong caramel. There's no strong malt flavor per se. Um, you know, little fizziness from a bit of carbonation. And that's about it. I mean, it's easy to drink. It goes down smooth. And that toasty, grainy aftertaste, which is mild, but still present, it's not unpleasant. Don't get me wrong, I kind of like that. But that's all you really have. I mean, if you compare this to the box from the really good American craft breweries, this gets lost in the crowd, in the shuffle. And if you compare it to the really good uh, and well-respected European breweries, again, it doesn't hold up to their box. This is better, don't get me wrong, guys, this is still better than anything Bud, Miller, or Coors will put out. And for the price point Yingling has, you can't really go wrong. This is an entertaining beer. Interesting, entertaining, whatever. Point is, I'm not unenjoying it. That's not a word, but whatever. But, I mean, it's not great. So, I'll call this a glass half full. This is good, but not great. And it's a decent offering from Yingling, but nothing spectacular. Um, you know? That's about really all I can say. If you're a fan of Box, I say check this out. Just to, you know, see what you think about it. And if you're a fan of Yingling, check this out because you'll probably like this if you if you really like their stuff to begin with. But overall, it's not that great. And I give it a glass half full just because it, it's inoffensive. There's nothing bad about this beer. But the flavors are tame. It's a bit watery. It could be so much better. And it's not. So, I mean, there it is, guys. Yingling's Bach. Um, a winter or spring beer. Limited, seasonal, something like that. 
Uh, it may come back next year, it may not. So, I mean, if you're interested, go pick it up now while you can. I think it's not bad, but I don't think it's great. And that's that, guys. Yingling, America's oldest brewery and still a brewery that puts out stuff that needs to be tried. So, that's why I got it, and that's why I shared it with you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. 